Good morning. This is blotchy. Every time I have a shower in this apartment and use the toiletries that are there, I get red blotches. I should have brought mine from home. I just didn't have any extra room in the case at all. What a square millimetre for a little tube of shampoo or conditioner. IB's back, as you can probably hear by the, uh, the coughing noises. He's just out of the shower. I just act like a coughing man. You're not a coughing man, but you made a noise. It was evident that you were in the apartment. I thought I'd just elaborate. Anyway, I've just had a shower. I need to sort my hair out because it's still wet. We're going out today. We're being tour guided over the other side of the river. We're going to get the metro and then we're going to hop on a boat, a 10 minute ferry crossing over to Casillas in Almada, where we're being met by a friend of mine called Paolo, who apparently watches the vlogs as well. So if you're watching this, hi, we're really looking forward to it. We're having a day out. We've been tour guided around and he has a car. Yeah, we've been doing everything by public transport. So so far. Anyway, yeah, so we're gonna have lunch over there with him and go see some sights. So excited for that. So I better get ready because we got going about, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. Come to Kaisodre. Rabbits on the wall. I'm late, I'm late, I'm terribly late, I'm late, I'm late. But we're not late, we're actually on time, so it's good. Well, the Herf is asking, I wonder if they numbered the tiles, you know, when they printed them so they knew where to put them. Come out of the metronome, we're just going straight out the back of the station and into the ferry terminal. There are toilets in here, but you have to pay a euro, a whole euro for a wee. Oh my goodness, I'm glad I went before I left the house. Anyway, our boat goes at quarter past 11. Use exactly the same tickets as you do for the train, trams, everything. Lisbon's looking very, very pretty in the sunshine today. I'm so glad the sun decided to come out at last. It doesn't half make a difference. There we are, this one. Gate number three. I think they're about every 15 minutes. Uh, oh, here we go. Gate's closed at the moment. It opens up when it's time. Oh, I've got all that water swirling and swooshing around. And here comes the ferry. I think that's ours now coming in. Sorry, I'm shooting into the sun a bit. I like going on the ferry. It's a real novelty for me. I find it really exciting. We're going on. There's this big beep and then that big door yeah. goes sideways. I can't quite get it on camera. Oh, there's a lovely cold breeze right in my face right now. It's really, really refreshing. There's a bit like a greenhouse in there. It's warming up a bit. We're we going on a boat. Oh, I'm getting excited. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> Buy yourself a film out the window. Ooh, oh, there's a look, there's like a basementy bit. That's so cool. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> oh, the engines are just firing up. Look, that's the ramp there. I presume they're gonna haul that back in now. Oh, there we go. Look, up it goes. Oh, that was a big clunk. I sounded like you making coffee this morning when I was still trying to sleep. That's what IB sounds like when he's making coffee. Quiet, when he's trying to be quiet, that's what he sounds like, didn't you? <laughs> it's true. He's raising his eyebrow at me. I was lying in bed and I could hear crash, bang, wallop, and I thought, oh, well, he's back. And apparently his thought bubble was, oh, I'm being ever so quiet, not waking him up. <laughs> Anyway, I did get a lovely cup of coffee in bed though out of it, so it was worth the torture. <laughs> yeah, even if you did spray water all over the floor and up the walls again. <laughs> anyway, look, look, we're leaving. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know how you do it, you just drop, drop drips of water everywhere when you're doing anything in the kitchen. <laughs> IB was just saying, my other half, invisible boyfriend, that's what IB stands for, in case you're new. He's real, he's just not on camera. Don't want to be on camera, do love. Anyway, um, he was just saying that it's nice to be able to see, you know, come back from this distance and see the cityscape. And it's beautifully lit because of the sun position at the moment. Definitely some crane action over there. There is, yeah. Crane action. I'm going to attempt to film on the boat. Oh, that window's open. Oh, that breeze is deliciously cool, actually. Oh, it's lovely. So 
we got a downstairs and an upstairs. Let's see if there's anybody downstairs. I think that's down here, yes. Oh, here we go, look. Oh, it's pretty quiet. Hey, it's complete, there's nobody here. Well, it's only a small compartment, look, but no windows. It smells a bit, it's not unpleasant. It smells just probably a bit engine-y, I suppose. Anyway, well, that was, I <laughs> hope you enjoyed that tour. Now we're going to have the delights of upstairs. So it's a bit graffitied. All right, that's it. Going back to my boyfriend now. Ooh, going a bit crab walky, sidestepping as the boat lunges around. I'm back. Ooh. <laughs> Look, we're not far off now already. For some reason it's gone extra sploshy at the side. So we're coming into Kasilish now. We're going to meet our friend at a red kiosk. Apparently it makes an excellent meeting point and we can't miss it. Oh, coming closer. Do you think it's going to be a great big clunk? There shouldn't be because we've got rubbery things, haven't we, obviously, to absorb the shock. Off we go. Look at that rubbery, scrapey noise. Yeah. You see all the people waiting to go on, they're going to go on through that one. Red kiosk. Oh, there's a red kiosk. I wonder if Paola's there. We're slightly early, so I'm just sitting here next to the kiosk. I'm not going to buy anything because I don't know if we're intending to be here for very long. But just so you know, that as soon as you get off the ferry, which is just there, like that's the terminal we came up that bit, I think. There's like a bus and tram terminal that takes you to different parts. I've been sitting here in this restaurant with Paolo and he's tour guiding us. He's been fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he's been driving us here and talking about all things on the way. Anyway, look, I've ordered some prawn curry. Yum yum, and Ibi and Paolo both got the same thing. What is that, Ibi? Uh, I don't know if I'm the best to describe it. Okay. Only chicken, done on the grill. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to tuck in. This is the most extraordinary curry I've ever had. Paolo warned me, he said it's going to be very, very mild, and it really, really is. I'm wondering if it's coconut or... It's such a, I don't know, it's almost like a frothy texture. It's very nice, very delicious. And very yellow. I've had an alcohol-free beer. The boys are on the water. Oh, I'm just ordering dessert. I'm going to have camel dribble. Camel dribble. It's just a real thing. So we got Paolo to translate, see. Baba de Camille. There we are. We'll see how that is. I should probably add, it's not actually made of camel saliva. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a name for it. Bad news. The camel saliva has dried up. It is no longer on the menu. So... We asked for, what did we ask for then? I can't remember. Coffee mousse and then that was run out. But we're having mango mousse. Third time lucky. There's a mousse, mousse to boot the hoose. So I've gone for mango mousse and, and IB's gone for a rice pudding. Oh, Paolo, we are going to see Paolo's chocolate mousse. Mmm! Very mangoey and very, very sweet and cold and refreshing. Finishing up with a little teeny tiny coffee. We're just leaving. This is where we were. What area are we in? Curroyos. We're off to do a bit of gallivanting now, aren't we, Paolo? Quite often, um, quite often by Euro. Really old olive trees, we're talking like a thousand yeah. years. These ones, yeah? Yeah. And there is a 2,000 year old olive tree in there. Wow. What an extraordinary looking place. It's actually like a little plaque there saying this was planted more or less when Jesus Christ was. Wow. <laughs> Oh, dropping everything. <laughs> See all the blue? Oh, yeah. Those are terracotta. It's a blue dog. Look at this tree here. It might not look like a very special tree, but actually, I've just been informed by Paolo that it was planted from the seed of a tree that survived the Nagasaki atomic bomb that struck in 1945. So I've just put that there for you to have a little read if you're interested. These olive trees are incredible. They must be ever so old. I don't know if I'm supposed to be walking on this grass. Wow, hey. Oh, we've got teeny tiny fishies darting about. It's Abraham Lincoln there. That is a giant blue dog. I mean, this is the 2,000 year old one. That's the 2,000 year old olive tree. Oh, wow, hey. We're coming through a place called Azitown. Where aren't we? What are those 
knobbly bobbly things. Oh, it's what? grapes. Ah, <laughs> oh, because it's a wine country. I, d I didn't actually notice there were grapes at first. We're driving around in circles here. We're distracting Paolo. <laughs> But I approve of this roundabout. See, I missed it with the camera. There's a silver flute on that roundabout. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> we're just passing the time doing a little bit of sightseeing and then we're going to be having a tour, aren't we? Yeah. It's the grapes. It's the grapes. Look. We're out on foot to do a little bit of exploring now. It's like a massive... Oh, I've missed it. There's a huge flying blue thing. I don't know what it was. It wasn't a moth. It was like a flying beetle or something. Massive. We're in an old wash place, you know, for washing your laundry where people used to come communally and do their laundry. And it's like a cafe now, or a restaurant. Oh, I don't suppose anybody uses it for it now. It's full of coins by the look of it. We just popped into the cemetery because I was curious, basically. I won't get any close ups or anything, but one thing I've really noticed that's very different is all of the graves have photographs, little portraits in little oval frames. And looking into the eyes, of the people in the photos, I feel like a real emotional connection that I don't normally get with gravestones. You know, I'm normally quite curious to see the names and the dates and maybe try to envisage maybe what people's lives might have been like or whatever. Never seen in my photographs and they've all got them as well. Well, we've come to a palace for a tour. Paolo's treated us. He says, this is all you buy me a coffee's in one go, he said. So thank you very much, Paolo. And um, we seem to be uh, greeted by some hounds. Hello. One of a number of them, in fact. There's one over there. That one's busy sleeping, though. Hello, investigating, are you? So I know nothing about this palace whatsoever at the moment, but I think that's about to change. We've had a tour of a couple of the rooms so far. There's no windows in there. There is a reason for that, actually, because during the war, Jews were hidden down here, actually. Portugal was neutral in the Second World War. So the land was owned right from this point here, the 1200s, late 1200s. There wasn't actually a building here until we got to, oh, this lady here, British. Those are her dates there. And that's when the building was made, although it did fall into ruins for a long, long period and has been re-sorted out. So now here we are in it again today just in another room it's a secret passage down there also they used to keep their valuables down there and some food and stuff as well no no this was like like, like a fridge Oh, we can see down into the secret no, passage. Look. Thing, thing, that, that if this was a solid floor, it would be an ideal place if people came in looking for them. Oh, no, no, so, no. no, no, no. But, but, like, they never like suspected or anything. I can tell you why this was like used as a fridge. So, on the, so you see this altar, right? After that wall, it's the kitchen. Oh, oh it's those lovely tiles again. We've been having a bit of a chit chat about the tiles and things in here. I'll show you the ones I like the best in a minute. Look at these here, mythical creatures. They were found in 1936 and they just, they don't really know how old they are. They're so beautifully done. Oh, what's that monstrous creature there? Is it the Kraken or something? Like a dragon there. Look at the size of that dog. I was thinking, is that a big dog or is it just close? <laughs> There's a cow on a cart. That's unusual. A man pushing a cart. I love this fish as well. It's beautiful, isn't it? So many of them. I'm going back and filming after everyone's gone out of the room. Look at this guy here. This great big long neck. I wish I could turn around and look at my own back. As if I've cut my own hair, that would just be really handy. So anyway, yeah, this house was completely in ruins for quite a long time, actually. All the wood rotted away and it was completely dilapidated. But it got redone up again then in the 30s, you see. In the next room, we got some photographs of that time when it was in ruins. Oh, look at the state of that. No floor, look. That's fascinating, isn't it? How they've completely turned it around. I suppose it could fire you up with enthusiasm about the potential of old places, couldn't it? Those tiles, roof tiles, all piled up on the floor, look. All mould growing up the walls. Outside, we've got vineyards and make wine, you see. So there is going to be a wine tasting thing. I'm missing the tour now. The house at the lake and also the bush garden. I'm getting vlog lag again, like I'm daring myself to walk on here. I'm scared. I'm doing it for the vlog. <laughs> I 
I used to be so fearless about things like this as a child, but now I'm older, I don't know. I think you sort of know about dangers and risks more <laughs> when you're older. I'm glad I've come up here now, actually, because um, I can see it more clearly, obviously. <laughs> I've got lost now. I'm left behind. This is nice, isn't it? Paula says this is still here, actually, in Lisbon. <sighs> right, then. Um, uh, oh, no. Vlog lag. But hey, look, you get to have a little walkthrough without invading people's privacy. So there we are. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, here's the timeline. Apparently it's the same information on both sides, but presented differently. But this one's a little bit more comprehensive. Uh, it's been quite interesting. Um, except I'm now lost. Oh, I think we've probably gone out here to the vineyardy bit. We've come out into the bright sunshine. I can't see. It's a lovely smell of the box. Can you smell the box, mm. I be? Yeah. <laughs> Those flashy sparkles coming off the water in the sunlight. Shooting right into the sun, but there's the vineyard ahead. That's that famous ceramicist, famous for the cabbagey designs, but it does lots of other things as well. Got the sun in my eyes, all squinty. Ooh, I found a bit to come in and explore. We've just been gazing at the lake lovingly <laughs> and chit chatting about it. Apparently, there's a really deep bit in the middle. You've, I don't know if you can see it on the camera actually. There's like a circular bit that's much deeper than the rest of it, and that's where the koi carp would normally be lurking, but they're actually not there at the moment, they're elsewhere at the moment. Oh yeah. Hey, look at that great big shell there. I don't know yeah. what it is. <laughs> I bet for sure it's from the sea. Oyster. Is it oyster? Oyster maybe. Can't be a conch. You're blowing them and they make trumpety noise, don't yeah, they? Clam. clam. Is it clammy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe Paolo will know. He might be the font of knowledge. I'm sure these chairs are in the... I'm trying to get arty shots of things reflecting in the water and I'd be fantasising about dancing on this table. Oh, I've got vlog lag. He's just starting up again. Look at those murky steps there. I reckon I'd slip if I tried to go down on those. It'll slimy looking. I like him though, look, with his spitty face. Vomiting statue. He's not vomiting at the moment though. Apparently it's wine tasting o'clock now. Thousands of years old. Okay, more specifically that one on the left. Is on 2,000 <coughs> in 300 years. And this one to the right is on 2,000 in 600. Okay? How do we even know this? It's like through a particle of carbon. That's present. On to the next bit of the tour now. You probably just heard that bit about the very, very, very old olive trees. Oh, I can smell the wine. Oh, wow. That's quite spectacular, isn't it? Isn't it? So the first part of this exhibition is actually an art exhibition by two different Jewish artists. So we're into the second part of the tour now. We've been looking at art, actually. This is African art here, as you can see. We're going into the final bit now, I think. We just had a health warning. Apparently, it's low oxygen. It's in an enclosed space, and it really stinks of wine. <laughs> so he said, if you feel poorly, let me know, and I'll put you in another room. In this legging it round the back now. I don't know why. I suppose you can see much in here. Is this the, the room? It smells of wine, nice, right? Plenty of oxygen, it smells delicious. I mean, I don't really like wine, but it smells absolutely lush. Mmm, because it smells sweet. We're heading off now. I'm just, um, I'm having a sneaky go on Paolo's lens. So this is the shot from that one. Oh, this is it. <laughs> it's a oh, bit, yeah, that is a zoom. Yeah, the 50 mm yeah, maybe not the best for vlogging. <laughs> will, it go, will it go further back? No, it doesn't zoom, does it? It's just 50 no. millil milli milliliters. milliliters. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, okay, so we just did wine tasting 
<laughs> Although I was, I was a real party pooper, wasn't I, Carl? Like, oh, it's uh, all a party pooper. Don't drink in the day. I stuck my tongue in a couple of them, didn't I? Tongue in a cup. I had a little sip of the muscatello and I tipped it secretly into a bottle to have later. <laughs> when they're very close up. Up ahead there, you see all those like clumps? <laughs> those are storks' nests and they've actually got storks on them. Let's see if I can zoom. It's going to be a bit shaky because I'm in a car, but look. Look at the wildlife! Oh, look at actual storks. Are you, are you having a cuteness overload moment, I'd be? Well, I wouldn't spill that far, but I wasn't expecting to see storks. I thought we could see them in there. Yeah, yeah, well they were here on the way up, but you were on the phone at the time. Oh. Whoa, whoa. I'm stalking them. <laughs> Right, we've had wine o'clock and now we're having coffee o'clock. Coffee o'clock and tart o'clock, I think. Yeah. What are we eating? Torta de Azeitão. And it is Azeitão the region. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's get into this thing. It reminds me of like a mini Battenberg. The, the plate. Oh, so it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into this thing. Oh, soft and spongy. It's got goo oozing out of it. I think that's always a good sign with a cake. Mmm. Oh, it's really light. Light and moist and sweet. And refreshing. Mmm. That was delicious. And quite eggy, I think, yeah. Taste egg. Egg um, interior. Like the goo that's coming oh, out. Oh, like that's, the yolk, you mean? Yeah, that's, that's egg. And we're going to wash them down with poppies. Mm. Mm, that's good coffee. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't manage to end the vlog last night. I'll tell you why in the next video, and I'm just going to leave you with a few outtakes from this one. Right, Paolo, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's Paolo on the spot. <laughs> what are you doing? Walking slowly oh. forward. Oh, okay. This is what happens behind the scenes. Huh? You're ruining my shot. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs>